everyone. Thanks for stopping by the Tone Attic. Sorry I've been gone for a couple weeks. The wife's had me doing all kinds of chores around the house. We've been doing landscaping and other things. So um, just been too busy and too sore. My fingers are sore. So I'm back at it today. I had a couple questions over the last couple weeks about how to, mainly specifically how to run some effects pedals through the SV20 without having it sound too distorted. So I'm gonna show you the way I do it. It's not necessarily the right way, it's just my way. Um, but I'll show you that it's getting a really good clean tone. And I use the four cable method where I put the, the drive pedals over here, I'll, I'll run in the front and then the delays and the, the modulation type of stuff I run out of the effects loop. So, um, and I'll show you how to hook all that up at the end of the video. We're gonna start off where I'm at now. I'll show you the amp settings over here. Um, I'm running into the dark side and jumper it over into the bright side. And then we'll get a close up over there of how I have all the settings set. And I'm gonna start off just clean, no other pedals on right now. And you get something that sounds like this. <laughs> let Plexi out of the room. It's a little much for her ears. It's not that loud, but she doesn't like it, so we'll let her out. Okay, we're back. So I'm playing through my PRS Les Paul S2 standard. I'm playing both pickups. I have the tone pots pulled on this. Um, so that gives you, so basically you're getting a single coil on the bridge pickup and a single coil on the neck pickup. And I have them blended together. While I have the amp with no pedals on, I have the volume pretty much cranked. I'm on about a little less than nine, eight and three quarters or so on both of them. And it's, you need that, since I'm using single coil, you need to turn it up to get the overall volume and sustain and tone that you want on the clean, uh, on the clean side. Then in a little bit, I'll switch over and I'll go to the Duelist and I'm gonna turn this way down, but I'm gonna show you some of the advantages of what that thing will do. So now let's talk about using uh, reverb and delay. Running through the, you go in and out of the uh, send and the returns, send it into the back uh, using two separate cables. And then just like any other amp, you run your kit, your guitar out for the, for the drive pedals and go in and out and then into your amp. So that's what they call the four cable method. So now let's listen to what it sounds like through just the Hall of Fame reverb. And I'll play again dry. This Marshall's just freaking awesome. It doesn't need anything. It sounds fantastic. Just straight into it. So let's see what we can do to it. So here's, I have a setting over here on, uh, I have spring reverb and I have the delay um, set. As you can see about 11 o'clock, the tone at 11 o'clock. I have it on the short and I have the level also at about 11 o'clock. And so this is what you get when you turn this on. Okay, now I'm going to add a little delay to that, and here's what we get. I'm using uh, the 2290 with modulation. Here's the settings that I have. I have it set right in the middle. This is what you get. tailing off. So here's what it sounds like just playing a chord and then stopping it. You hear it tailing. With just the reverb, you'll lose that tailing somewhat. There's still a little in there. It depends on how you set it. Now you can turn 
the decay way up and you can turn the level way up and you'll get some of that through here. But when you're going to use them both in conjunction with each other, you're better off turning these down. Right at around 11 o'clock, I think, sounds good. And you could mess around. You have plate reverb and room and hall. You can make, if you want to sound like you're playing in a hall, you can change here and then you get this. You can hear the, you know, you get that kind of edge. Okay, now let's talk about how I like to use it. This pedal here is, it kind of does it all. It's a dual pedal. This side's set up to be, they call it the string singer. It's, it's a tube screamer, but it's not like any tube screamer I've ever played. It's a world of difference between this one. Um, it brings all the, it's not just a mid hump, it leaves all the highs in, and you can set it for glass, stock, or fat on both, uh, on both sides of this. On the other side, they call the heavy hand, and that's set up to sound like an old Marshall blues breaker, which it does, it sounds exactly like one. And then you can stack them both together, which is what I'm going to do, and you just can, you get the total hot rotted Marshall tone or whatever you want it to sound like, depending on how you set the levels. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the volume down substantially on these to about four and I'm going to turn these on back down the volume on the guitar So here is the effects loop, and this is going into the send, this one's going into the return, and I'll show you where these are coming out on the pedal, and then this is the direct line out, right here, you just plug straight into it. You run this line directly into your recording interface, and from there it'll capture the raw sound of your amp, uh, but you are going to need to use a cab IR simulator in order for it to sound good. Uh, this is going into the two notes. And then in the back of the two notes. So you plug into the speaker in the two notes, you come out, and this you can go straight full blast out to your speaker cabinet or you can attenuate it. 
this will give you a minus 20 dB volume reduction going to the speaker cabinet, which works great for sitting in front of the amp while you're recording, and you just simply raise the volume back up in post-production. Um, I've been recording this way, it works out fantastic. And I have that going into the cabinet, so it's not blowing, blowing us out of the room. And it still sounds pretty good. It's not as good as what it sounds like totally, totally full blast, but hey, I like my ears. Okay, so here's where it's coming out of the send, out of the back of the amp. You put it into the input of your whatever your modulation pedal is going to be, and then you come out. This is a stereo. I'm just using a mono. Um, so I'm coming out of the mono output and going in to the Hall of Fame, and then I come out of the Hall of Fame and bring it back to the return and the amp. This is going in from my guitar, it's going in and then it comes out, it goes into the Tube Screamer, comes out, goes into the Friedman, comes out and goes into the amplifier. That's the four wire method, at least the way I use it. So this is how I record it direct from the direct out, it's how I record all. Those are my microphones coming in. You have the two notes. And this is the line coming out from the back of the Marshall, direct line out, going into the Model 12 and uh, that's where I record the raw signal. It's still gonna need a IR cab simulator to sound good, which I'm gonna show you in an upcoming video. This is the SM58 on the lower cabinet. This is the VR1 ribbon mic on the upper cabinet. And this is a extra mic that I didn't use in this video. This is my talkback mic that I have my little Rhodes uh, wireless mic in. And that's how all that works. This is program out. And this is the little Model 12. It goes straight into a card. The card goes in there, which I'm getting ready to edit the video. You just take it out and edit it. I like it this way. I'm old school. It's what I'm used to in the recording studio. I have all my familiar buttons and knobs, and that's how I do it.